Hello, this is ABC, and welcome to Data Engineering and Infrastructure Community. Our today's topic is today. Uh, Hitesh will be presenting to work around Spark SQL, so he will go deeper on showing the demonstration event to the code side and showing the demo and how it works. It will be proper code and why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so today I am going to uh, uh, just uh, first thing I'll do with the date manipulation. So date function, multiple date functions, and the uh, string function. So uh, uh, we had some exposure to the Spark SQL earlier uh, when we in the last session, if you if you remember. So we learned about uh, some uh, simple functions like call function, lit function, and when and otherwise clause. So those were uh, really, really basic uh, Spark SQL stuff, but really powerful thing. Uh, we'll cover the uh, uh, will uh, that will again come up in some time when when we are going to look at the UDF and all those stuff and how to utilize them uh, them to make your own UDF be using the Spark native function, not uh, not the your normal UDF. Okay. So that will cover in the later session. Today it, it just a simple date functions and string manipulation. Okay, so the first thing is uh, before we start for the string function uh, date and time function. So the first thing is we need to know the default formats uh, for the time and timestamp uh, columns. Okay, so whatever whatever column that you have, if you're uh, uh, casting that column into date or timestamp column, by default they are assumed to be of uh, uh, this format. So for date. It is assumed that you have the format YYY MMDD, okay. And for the timestamp, it's uh, this format. Uh, in timestamp, there is also a sub. Uh, can uh, you can have the subset of this uh, format like this one? Uh, we do not have the uh, milliseconds. Then also it takes it by default. But anything other than that, uh, you have to specify your own uh, format. Okay. And how to specify uh, all the stuff? I'll I'll uh, tell you in detail. Uh, so the first thing is uh, just a simple function. So uh, I have my so uh, I've just created a data frame uh, which contains uh, uh, which contains just a bunch of dates uh, in each and every column. Okay, and I'm just what I'm doing. I'm just uh, uh, converting this so by default it is taken as string and i'm just uh, casting it into a, a, a date uh, date column okay so i'll run this one okay so uh, it converted, it basically passed it the read because it was in the prescribed format. But let's suppose. Uh, Hitesh, if, uh, can you uh, please uh, print the schema as well so that other C actually changed from string okay, to. Okay, okay, okay. So you can see this one. So when I define my data set, uh, data frame, so at that time, uh, the column schema was string, okay? And when uh, then when I use the two date column, it basically converted into date time, okay? Uh, so please forgive my naming convention. So date, uh, I should not be using date. Uh, in data frame, it doesn't make uh, any difference. But let's suppose if you're going to use data sets, or let's suppose uh, you're going to collect 
and uh, use somewhere, then most probably you will uh, face uh, you will face an issue uh, at the time. So now uh, this was the basic procedure. Uh, I had string I converted into date, and this was in the prescribed uh, date format, and that's why it worked all worked all right. Okay. So now I show you it's the same example, basically exactly the same thing. Just it has a different format. You just if you can see I have the format uh, like this one, and my prescribed format is y y y hyphen m instead of hyphen i have a slash okay. so uh, if i uh, so if i run this okay so originally so this should be if if i am trying to go uh, type cast it using the two date then uh, it will give me a null, okay? But uh, what I can do is I can specify my own format, okay? Uh, by using, uh, just passing the param uh, format as my parameter. So then it can basically uh, cast that uh, string into the uh, date. Okay. So this one is a pretty simple one. Uh, yes, I think it's straightforward. I do not need to explain what that. I, I had a question. A format. Yeah. So the question is: uh, Is there any way to understand what mm. is the format the your uh, date column is from? So, if for example, okay. I don't have so, a year, and or I have yeah. only y y, so it always create yeah. a confusion. So, is there a way to do that to find out? Okay, all right. So, uh, so there is not a specific way to find out what what is the type of a column. So, what you can do is you can basically create a list of all the uh, formats that can that can be possible okay. uh, i can give an ex uh, i do not have the example ready right now but it can be done is basically I, i'll create a list of formats okay and i'll try to cast uh, the uh, string into that format and get to know okay so uh, what is the specified specific format then we can use that one but that is an uh, really expensive process i would say uh, so the other way was uh, I have one example where we have different timestamps, different uh, different timestamp format. Okay, so let's suppose uh, uh, there are three or four different uh, timestamp format are, are being used, and we want to uh, uh, pass that column into a single format. I have that example at the end of this section. Okay, I'll show you that example. When you have the multiple, okay, so I'll just show you on one side. It can part with this, uh, then we will go in yeah. the end. That is fine. We, we will okay. see that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, you will have the different, uh, so here you will have like date, like it is, it contains slash, the next one will contain just that. Then uh, you might have just uh, year and month. Uh, so, uh, so that way we can have, uh, we can do that. Uh, I'll show you uh, how that is done. So this is your normal. Okay. Similarly, uh, for the timestamp, uh, I have done this. Okay. Uh, so oh, sorry, I forgot to do something. So here it was in string. Okay, so I can uh, similarly that we had above. So we have the column type the string, and I'm get converting into a timestamp. Uh, so I, if you want, I can show you the of this one.
So let's see this. Mouse, which thing? Then it is converted into time stamp time. Again, forgive me for the use <laughs> for using the wrong column name. Okay, so uh, it was simple for me to show that. That's why I am using. Okay. So similarly, uh, so this was my uh, default prescribed time stamp column uh, format. Uh, so time stamp format. That's why uh, the two stamp, uh, the two time, the two time stamp function work uh, exactly as it should. But similar, uh, similar uh, earlier that we had function. Uh, here we have the in a different format. Okay, so it is it contains slash and it doesn't even contain the seconds or milliseconds. Okay, and I, what I want to do is uh, I want to cast it into a time frame. So it is almost the same thing as earlier. So what I've done is I've just given the schema here. Okay. So now if you see an interesting point here in some of the date uh, uh, here, if you can see, this is my date, this is my month, and this is my year. So here, if you can see my date uh, does not contain zero one. Okay. So if I use uh, this format, ED, so in that scenario, this one will give an error. Basically, it will uh, output as null. Okay. Uh, so basically, when you do not have this zero one zero two or uh, that is prescribed, then at that time you just need to use a single D or uh, M or Y. And why is it so? Uh, I have an uh, I have a list of functions. When to use it? How to use it? Uh, for for the time frame, I'll show you that uh, at a later stage. Okay. So right now, what I've done is I just specified single D, single M, single Y. And uh, we'll be using this. Okay. Okay. So here, if you can, uh, yeah. So here, if you can see the example. So earlier, this was my data frame. What I did is that I tried to directly convert to two time stamp using the two time stamp method, and it gave me null. Okay. But when I've specified a particular format, it was uh, type cast. Okay. And the uh, the way I was saying, uh, telling you regarding this one, if I use C D D instead of D. So then what will happen? Yeah, it is a pass exception now, right? It's uh, or does it yeah. you it will move you to go to the legacy mode something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's why uh, while using this one, we need to take care of this. Just writing the current format or writing a broader uh, format. Okay, you will have the uh, where it can contains all all sort of examples. Okay, so it might even be the case that you might need to use just H and M here as well. Okay. Then also it will work fine. Isn't it then very safe to always use broader format, or is it ex that's an expensive thing to do? Uh, no, it's not an expensive thing to do. So what it does is basically it uses the uh, Java simple read format for that one. So it's uh, the cost is same because uh, uh, to use the uh, so internally uh, it doesn't have any uh, difference. Uh, just if if the uh, Java simple read format has a uh, uh, higher computation time between these two formats, then I don't know. But uh, here, in in terms of Spark, there there shouldn't be any uh, any difference. Yeah. Uh, so I have not benchmarked it with respect to using the broad uh, broader this thing. So maybe uh, uh, I have a huge data set of hundred gigs. 
it contains the date and i'm formatting uh, for that maybe i can try to benchmark that uh, yeah, i've just uh, got yeah, yeah, yeah i just got time. curious that yeah, since yeah. it uh, it actually fix lot of casting bug uh, can yeah. we always use that rather than even trying to do hhmm just use dmy so that's why yeah. i was curious that uh, like can it be done okay. yeah so i i'll uh, i'll benchmark it uh, and i'll uh, let, let you know the result okay. uh, actually in the group i'll let you uh, let uh, everyone know the what is the result of that benchmark okay so now uh, what i what we have done is so basically i had this one i have converted into a time step so on this time step i want to get different thing from this time step let's suppose i want to convert it into a date it's okay, so what how can i convert this time step into a date basically i'm not uh, i'm not uh, i do not want the uh, this time time information i just want the date it's okay, so what i can do i can just use the two date and it works fine so or if i just want the year so i can use the year if i just want the month then i can use the month if i want the day of month okay so just the month uh, okay uh, sorry just the day so it is the day of month okay. uh if i want to get an hour okay. similarly uh minute second okay and if i want to get a millisecond i'll cover how to how can you get a millisecond uh, now the next thing is it's like a day of a week so let's suppose the uh, 20 uh, 2020 12 to 2018 is which day in a week so it, it is a monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday so you get a, a zero base string uh, sorry zero base, zero index uh, integer for the uh, day of week similarly the day of year so it is like uh, when you say uh, so the 1st of january will be first day and the 31st of january will be 31st day and uh, 14th of february uh, will be uh, 45th day okay so if you want to get in that manner then you can get this one uh, so which quarter it is okay so uh, in which in which quarter does does my day, date lies so it is from 1 2 3 or 4 which quarter uh, uh, this thing is uh, this thing comes uh, really handy while uh, uh, finding the financial quarter. Uh, I'll explain in a later examples how we can do that. Okay. Then uh, so here here is the list uh, the complete list of functions that we can use. Okay. Uh, just like we had for the format. Okay. If I want to get a certain thing in a certain format, how can I define that? So it's an AM or PM of a day. Let's suppose uh, what I want is a date in an AM PM format, and why I want to have the AM and PM specified. It, it is an AM or PM. I want to have it specified. Okay, we can use A for that. D we have already seen day of year. It's small D is uh, day of month. Okay. Uh, then we have the E. Not really use that much. Week of month not uh, not use error. I have never used that. I have never seen an example of it. Anyone using it, but it can be there as well. Uh, then you have the uh, okay. So if you see, we have we used capital H, right? So it was like in 24 uh, 24 hour terminology in the small h. So it's basically uh, AMPM. Okay, so when you say small h h. That means you are saying that you want the date in the uh, in the twelve hour format, okay? And uh, you know, what you can do is after that you can specify as a. Okay? So I'll just give an example. So suppose uh, you have this format, right? So and you want to define a format like you want to have the uh, twelve hour time, and then you have you want to have the AM or PM. You can use this one. Uh, to pass uh, to pass to this format uh, to get get a date in this. How to pass to a certain format? Uh, I'll come to that in a little. Okay. Then uh, similarly, K M. So it contains almost all the things. 
quarter and all this. I have a question See? in that one interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So time zone. What it yeah. it does it pick the time zone of your local machine or uh, your particular okay, time so zone? How? What it does is what it does is basically uh, your Spark session has a local time stamp. Uh, sorry, time zone. Okay. So when you are initializing your Spark session, or uh, what you can do is uh, you have defined your Spark session, right? So what you can do is Spark dot set. Uh, time zone something like that. Uh, there is spark dot spark countries dot set. Uh, time zone something like that. So we set the time. We can set the time zone. Uh, I can let you know that. So, uh, so there is a spa, uh, uh, there is a functionality. Uh, whatever time zone set for the spark session, that time zone it will take. Okay. Normally, uh, it takes the uh, local machine's time stamp. It, what you can do is you can just give your UTC time stamp, or let's suppose you want to work on a certain time stamp, you can give the time stamp, and then uh, by default, it will be using that time stamp. Okay. And by default, wh whatever you are using, it it uh, it is assuming that uh, that is the time stamp that you are going to use. Okay. Uh, uh, whatever the time stamp you are set in your uh, uh, machine that time stamp is being used. Okay, so uh, similarly, uh, so if you want to manipulate your uh, date, so what you can do is so, uh, different methods. Okay, you have the date you want to convert to a specific for date format. Okay, so what you can do is date format and give your date format. We'll just pass it to that format. If you want to add months to your timestamp or a date column, you can add months or subtract months. If you want to add day or subtract a day, if you want to add hours, then you can use this way. If you want to add or subtract minutes as well, then also you can use a similar way for the hours. Just in the internal, you need to provide the minutes. Okay, so I'll. Uh, so it's it's a simple thing. Okay? So. Uh, if you if you see this function, so they are self-explanatory most of the things. Uh, okay, so date format, and then you have provide, provided a format, so it passed into that format. Add months. It's basically saying you will add the months to which column, and how much how many months. Similarly, subtract. Uh, so it is just add months, and I've just given the minus so that it subtracts from there instead of adding. Uh, date add. It takes number of days it needs to add. Okay, Sorry, it's minus one for this one. Uh, minus one day. That means it, it is minus one. Uh, just a day, data add. Just the same thing. Just have given the minus, and then you have the plus uh, plus two hours. That means I am adding an interval of two hours to my time stamp, and it again is cast into the default time stamp type, which is this one okay then uh, you have the similarly you can uh, subtract uh, two hours as well or what you can do is you can subtract minutes or seconds as well whatever you want to do okay So, uh, so this thing is I have taken from the Spark documentation itself. So, if you if you want, I can share the link for the documentation. So, yeah. So, if you can see this one uh, earlier, I was I had the timestamp string. I parsed into this timestamp column from string string to is, is a timestamp column. From the timestamp, I have got a date. Uh, I passed it into a particular format. Okay. If you want, we can try other format as well. Then if you want to add two months, so when you add two months uh, to this one, sorry, I have added two months to this one, so it is two months to this. Then uh, you have uh, subtract two months, okay, December, so it is October. Similarly, if you want to add a day, it is 28th, 
29, simulate 27. Okay. Uh, plus two hour, plus two hours. It was 12. It is now 14. Okay. It was uh, minus two. That means it's minus two hours. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to have like, if you want to subtract minutes as well, then then it's also almost similar. Column. That's 20 minutes. As you can see this one. So it was at like twelve. Now it is eleven forty. Similarly, you can make a call this. Okay. So this is manipulating the same date. Okay. And let and now we'll see uh, its comparison with the other date uh, with, with the current timestamp. Okay. Or current date. Uh, how can we have uh, a difference for that? So I'm using this one only. Uh, so earlier, if you can see, uh, there is it. Sorry. So I'm using this uh, data frame only, which we had to use earlier. Uh, for doing all uh, for doing all this okay so if you can see here what i've done is the first thing is i've converted into a particular format sorry from particular format into a time stamp i just watch the switching volume then again got the date then i found the current date current time stamp okay that uh that time stamp uh in seconds uh i I think I forgot to add this one. In milliseconds, uh, I'll, I'll explain how, what I've done. Just the milliseconds of that time stamp. Okay. Uh, difference in days between the two time stamp. Difference in second, difference in millisecond. And Let's suppose you want to have a detailed description of, about the difference. So between two days, what is the year, month? Uh, uh, you will see this example. Okay. Then uh, months between uh, the difference in months. Okay. So this can also be approximated using uh, the different days. And then uh, you can use that uh, thing to find the months. Uh, the months between has one issue uh, which I'll explain in some time. Okay. And then you can have the, uh, you can approximate a timestamp to a particular. Thing. What do I mean by approximate a timestamp? So let's suppose you want to get uh, which quarter does it belong to. Okay. You want to get the start date of that quarter. Or let's suppose you want to get the start date of that year. Or that, uh, let's suppose you want to approximate to the start of the day. Okay. So uh, how can how can we do that? I'll explain first. I'll run once, and then I explain each and every point. Okay. So the first one was uh, a string, correct? I have just cast it into a timestamp using this, this format. Okay, this is there. Then from this, I have taken the date. This we have already say, seen. Okay. Then I have found the today's date, uh, the current date. Okay. Then we have the current timestamp. 
and as you can see uh, my i am in ist time zone and that's why you you can see that it is in ist uh, if you want uh, you can change the time time zone for this one as well and get the time uh, utc time zone i'll show you how to do that i'm not written in this one but i'll show you how to how it can be done then in epoch seconds basically uh, epoch is like uh, it is considering 1st of january 1970 as your starting point for recording all uh, starting point for all the records and then uh, from there how many seconds have have gone by okay same thing in milliseconds okay and if you can see this one my current time stamp was uh, 16 40 37 7 33 what i've done is i've just taken the milliseconds parts of it and i just i wanted the milliseconds uh, till 6 uh, uh, this one. so uh, this one is not normally used uh, uh, you have the time stamp 6 milliseconds uh, it is used only when you have the really high frequency rate uh, high frequency rate high frequency uh, sensor data and at that scenario uh, this sort of uh, thing will be used as you will not see this one uh, uh, millisecond going to this one uh, okay so what i have done is basically i have on this one what i can do is i can use a single s then i can get just the first time uh, uh, just the first decimal point double s for double de uh, second decimal point triple s for three decimal point and six s for the six decimal points after this one. okay so these are basically milliseconds or you can say it's nanoseconds instead of milliseconds you can say it's in nanoseconds okay then difference is days between my current time stamp and the time stamp which i had uh, uh, casted okay or which i have read okay similarly uh, the same difference in seconds and the same in milliseconds okay so how i am doing the millisecond part is simple one what i am doing is i am just casting that time step into a double okay and then using that double uh, to use this one okay so if you can see here to find the epoch in milliseconds i have done the same thing okay so what happens in a double is basically what it does is your this your epoch time step is there then after that you will have dot and then you have your uh, millisecond part there okay so what i have done is i just multiplied it into 1000 okay. let us just see that one. it is approximating but uh, yeah So, uh, might uh, so I have done drunk it also. So, it shows. Yeah. Uh, just a I show you this one. Maybe just a single thing might work. Let's do this.
Curso show ali. Mas eu não tenho. No, no, no. It shows directly as well. Uh, just a second, okay. Just, let's see. It's a show again. Okay, so it, it just gives you a double number. Okay, so you have the epoch, epoch time dot, then you have your um, uh, whatever milliseconds is there. Okay. So that's why what we uh, what we do is basically multiply it by a uh, thousand to get the, get it in a millisecond. Okay, so you have seconds, and after dot you have the milliseconds, right? So when you multiply it by thousand, then you have the millisecond. And actually, you get a nanosecond. So if you multiply by uh, one one million, then you will have the nanosecond. Uh, okay. Then. Uh, just use this. Uh, just remember this trick. So this is a really important one. Just to cast into the double uh, to get a millisecond. Okay. So this one is uh, really important. Uh, I do not have the example today for that, but it is a really important trick. Uh, we'll use that in a later classes. Okay. Or say this. Okay. Okay. So uh, then we have the. Truncate one. Okay, so we. Uh, I I I was done till difference in day, difference in milliseconds. Okay. Now, if you can see the difference in dates in a text. Okay, so it's like what is the difference between them? Uh, we want to get this. It just gives you year, month, and day. If you have a date. And if you have a timestamp, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm basically uh, subtracting uh, two dates, today's date and the date from the timestamp which I have got. The other one is I'm uh, subtracting timestamp to the uh, uh, current timestamp to the timestamp that with, uh, I type cast. Okay. So in the timestamp, you get the hour, minute, seconds. In date, you get year, year, month, and day. Okay. So. Uh, this is uh, this is used sometime for a display purposes, uh, like time remaining and all the stuff, or um, not getting the exact uh, remember the exact uh, example now. But this is uh, most probably used uh, to display that that sort of the, uh, what was the difference between them, uh, the two or something like that. Yeah, these are more readable uh, in those scenarios. This is more readable. Yeah. Yeah. And difference in months using the month between, so it is uh, just giving me the month between approximate. Uh, I think this has changed in this Park Three. Earlier, what uh, what was there? You, you used to get the integer, uh, not the uh, the thing fraction one. You used to get an integer, and uh, the base was thirty one days. So even if you had twenty one day, twenty eight days thing. Uh, let's suppose you are uh, comparing uh, November, uh, up November, March, and April. Sorry, not November. February, March, and April. Okay. So let's suppose you have one date in February, and let's suppose one one date you have in uh, April. Then at that time, it will give you approximately three. Uh, used to get give you approximately three, uh, considering the thirty one. But when you come, when you are comparing the multiple years, that at that time in approximation you might get some error because it was saying thirty one as a base. So what it does is basically it takes the uh, used to take difference between the two dates, uh, in a, using the uh, basically internally using the uh, date dip and then divide by thirty one to get the uh, to get your difference between the uh, months 
month between the two days. Okay. So uh, instead of that, what you can do is uh, basically uh, get the difference of days and then uh, you can do that. So that is a separate function you have to write, but this is the approximate you can get. Now, this one is a date truncate. So this is the same function. If you have used the TSQL or uh, yeah, TSQL has this function, it's basically taken from there. So basically date truncate and what you can give is to what format you want to truncate. So that means uh, to what format you want to get the date uh, date into. Okay. So you can see here uh, this one. Uh, this is this is what the column I am using. So I want to get the quart, uh, uh, starting date of quarter. Okay. So if you can see, so it is in the October to December quarter, right? So you will get uh, it as a first December as your date. Okay. So this function is really important to get your uh, this one uh, quarter. Okay. And then uh, if you remember, I said about the uh, just quarter, uh, we, find, we used to find the quarter from there. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Okay. Using this one, we uh, these two functions, the combination of these two and some manipulation, we can find the financial quarter. Okay. What you can do is basically you, uh, what you do is uh, uh, you subtract it by four or something like that, and then uh, uh, you just add into this one and you get the financial quarter. Uh, I I I like uh, uh, so after after the example I have uh, I'll explain how to do that because I I also don't remember I just need to recall the logic for that. Okay. So in the date function I have the common function. Okay. So now if you can see that what I have done what I have is a different date format different time frame format. Okay. For the same it is for the same date but can be anything. Okay. So just I was creating an example and what I want to do is I want to get from this example I want to get the uh, uh, convert into one common format all right so uh, let's suppose if I want to use If I want to do this one, PDF dot column. I'm calling it a time term one only. Better than new. I try to do a two time term. Let's use the call. Okay, so what will happen is basically you will have just this one. Okay, so these two are all, almost approximately same from my actual timestamp format. Okay, but these two are not there, so I got a null for them. Okay, and what will uh, what what if I just pass my uh, so you say okay so what what if I just pass my one format? Okay, so what is the format of this one? So it is my dd or let's say d dash m d slash m slash y is m try to the no, no, sorry, sorry, <laughs> my mistake. M, I, I, <laughs> I got confused between this. You see, that's why I have this word of this. So minute is small m, and m is month. Sorry, <laughs> my mistake.
so this one so if i do it this way then it should uh, what you would think is uh, it should take okay so this one is your normal format then it will take this one then it is my normal format then also it will take this one and for this one i specified the format then it should work correct but that is not the case what it does is basically it try it uses this one to uh, convert all all this one so i'm getting uh, only this one okay all right so what what we can do is basically we can uh, we can create multiple time jump columns for a multiple uh, so whatever different formats that we have and then join all these columns so how to join all these columns i'll show you that as well okay so similarly what i'll do is basically i'll create another column okay uh, same thing okay. uh just giving it as a name is format one trying to be uh be pythonic <laughs> they are doing a lot of yeah 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 oh um, yeah 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 so uh using this way um so what I'm so what police does is basically takes multiple columns as an input, okay, and whichever is the first non-null column, it will take that value of that column, and then uh, it will use that. So then uh, it can be used. So what what we can do is we have the timestamp, so it, it basically gives me the uh, value in that one uh, timestamp, and then we can use that. Uh, what I've done is if I have that value. So uh, why I was not using two times when there was because uh, that casting error was one thing. So what I did is I basically use the Unix timestamp. So basically it is getting converted into the uh, Unix timestamp. That means it is converted into epoch seconds. Okay. So these are the three epoch seconds. Then I police it. That means whatever the nulls were there, it just substituted the nulls. And then uh, what I've done is I use the from Unix timestamp uh, to convert into my required format. Uh, if you want, I can deconstruct this one. So it is a simple one, but uh, if you want, I can deconstruct this one. Anyone wants to de uh, me to deconstruct this? Maybe you are, uh, it is going above your head right now. Or um, or I think it is fine. Like date time, this Unix yeah. conversion is always tricky. So I think we need to yeah. play further to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it's simple. Just uh, just do a width column and date date format one, date format two, date format three. You have the three columns, and then uh, what I've done is I basically uh, police all the three columns at the same time instead of defining each and every column. Uh, otherwise, I'll just uh, use this method to get the result out of it, and then use another function. To this. So we call it as a chaining of functions, okay? and this is a really important thing. Uh, chaining of function. This this is what we are going to use uh, to get rid of UDFs. Uh, uh, UD of the uh, normal way. Okay. So the chaining of function is what we are going to use uh, to get rid of the uh, UDF. And why we need to get rid of UDF? What are UDF? That we we'll cover at a later stage. But just remember that UDF are not normally preferred in Spark. Okay. And to get rid of UDF, you, you basically need to use a chaining of functions to do that. Okay. So now I have uh, another one, which is uh, for the manipulation of string, or you can say uh, to get the details of the string. Uh, we can cover other things because I do not have much uh, prepared as of now. Okay, so what I've done, I've just created a df with a simple uh, strings. Okay, so I show you this actual df. Okay.
อ่ะสวัสดีSo if you can see, so I have a data frame which has a column called as phrase, okay, and it contains some phrases. Okay. Now suppose I want to find the phrases which contains cat, okay. So it's basically like contains. So uh, there are two ways. So there is are like and there is contains. Okay. Uh, so uh, so are like is like a regex match. Whereas contains is it will look for the exact uh, thing. Okay. Uh, means uh, oh, let me uh, I how to explain that. Let it be. I I I am not able to get uh, good example as of now. So it's like R like uh, cat. So then if it contains cat, then it will give me true or false. Okay, and same similarly for the Contains it's almost just the same thing, and if I want to find multiple keywords, if it contains multiple keywords, if it contains cat and dog, I want to do that way. Then I can what I can do is I can use the pipe, okay. And let's suppose I have a list, okay, which contains the keywords I want to check if they are available or not. Then what I can basically do is I can just convert this into a string. Uh, basically, convert this list into a string using the make string, and I have the type separator as my uh, pipe. Okay, so this way I can look this one. So basically, if I want to check for the multiple keywords if they are present in my column or not, in a text or not, I use the pipe to do that. Okay. Okay. So if you can see, contains cat. Okay. It contains cat or dog, okay. And if it is in the list, okay. So I in the list I had all these cat, dog, and pizza. All the all the keywords were there. Okay. Now, if I want, uh, okay. So this is one example of R like. Now, second thing is, let's suppose uh, I want to find if it is starting from a certain keyword or it is ending with a certain keyword. So I can use the R like and regex, and there is another one. There is a method called as starts with. Okay. And I can pass this one. Uh, so it is the same thing. Okay. So if I say I like. So if you can see this one, what I've done is I've created I like tacos. I like this one. So these are some strings, okay. And what I want is, uh, I want something which contains. If it start with I like, okay, I want to that that one, okay. Or let's suppose I I want to find the, if it ends with something, okay. Uh, so these are the example for that one. So this is your normal SQL thing. Okay, in SQL you use the R like, normal SQL. Any any SQL uh, language. Let's suppose if you are using MySQL or something, you use the R like. In Spark, you have functions like Spark uh, starts with as well, so you can use that as well. Internally, it basically getting converted into the R like only. Uh, but uh, it's almost one and the same thing. But this is, I would say, a preferred uh, way to do it. Uh, why? Because uh, it basically helps uh, anyone who is not from the Spark world as well to understand your code. Uh, starts with also is the same thing, but uh, it's easier to um, what you can say adapt for other people. They do not need to remember fifty different functions. Uh, just one R like uh, can do multiple. Stuff. So similarly, uh, earlier that uh, like earlier we had pipe for the multiple matching means this or this. Okay. So this is it starts with I like or it starts with I want. Okay. Uh, similarly, starts with I like. Here also, I can give the pipe and use that one. Pipe. Okay. Uh, 
similarly you can use r like and then use uh, hash sorry yeah dollar at the end to find if if it ends with a pizza and what you can do same thing you can have is ends with just like we have here uh, we can use that way and this is the one which contains the list uh, i want to find uh, if it ends with tacos or pie uh, i'm just uh, using that list in a similar way just creating that uh, this literal uh, here uh, using the string menu this one is it. okay so if you can see I think I have this one doesn't work with shortcuts. Pipe. Let's see. So this one is uh, R like, I like, and I want. So this to contain I like and I want, and that's why they are true, uh, and others are false, because pi is what I like. Uh, if it was directly doing a string method, then it would have uh, made this one true, as it is uh, not there, and it is not just doing just one uh, each and every individual string matching is it's also not doing that. Okay. Now this starts with function. Uh, it's I like only. Uh, this one will be true, and the pipe function it is not working. Why is it not working? I need to look into that. But it should have worked. Might be something some uh, in a different way. I need to send uh, give that. But yeah, so that's not a good. Thing. Then similarly ends with just like start with its ends with. This one is there then there is a special case scenario is let's suppose you have an, a string with a special character and you want so special character is pipe okay what or uh, let's suppose square or let's suppose carrot is there so th those are the regex uh, regex matching uh, the thing right uh, strings so if it is in the regex uh, the thing so then you cannot directly match it so what we need to do is we can use the uh, in uh, since we are using Scala here, so in Scala there is uh, from the Java regex class there is a uh, you can use a pattern code uh, to get the special this thing about this one, and then you can use that. Uh, whereas in uh, PySpark, uh, what was the name? Uh, there is also a class which you can basically convert whatever string literal you have. Uh, you can convert into a particular encoding uh, to use that. Let me just show you this example first. Print. Let me just print this example. So that it will be different. Uh, what answer? So fun pipe stuff. So normally it is if it if my string contains fun or stuff, then it will mark as uh, true. Okay. So this will be true. This will be true. This will be true. This will be true. Okay, this will be false. But what should have happened is one pipe stuff. This means this true and this this is true and other two is false. That's what my result should have been. Uh, so how to get that result? Uh, I'm explaining you that. Okay. And please, uh, please, I would say uh, even if it looks like a boring stuff right now, but Understanding this function is uh, really important to understand how uh, how to program with Spark. Uh, so there are there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of courses online or uh, Udemy or other stuff or books which just explain you the basics of Spark, but not this function. I want you to know this functions because uh, this really helps you in learning the coding aspect and how you can code your uh, uh, what a code you are going to write. How can write that code really in fast manner and in an efficient manner? Okay, so this these things will all uh, wrap up into a one uh, 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 great what you can say great not great a good uh, programming experience at the end of the course. 
and when whenever you will try to solve any problem then you will get to know why this thing so important true to add to that uh, string manipulation is everywhere so like when you start like you uh, and my, most of you are aware that you know, we have 80 percent unstructured data and only 20 percent structured data so you will end up using unstructured data and this is where you need them like regex even if you hate it you need it so uh, working as a distributed function when we started i saw many directly go and start writing udfs for regex just to avoid the problem but in spark you can really do regex inside uh, in a scalable pattern so what ritesh is saying is totally makes sense that these uh, manipulations are very tiny and very confusing so this will help you later but these are important and essential to understand so if you can see so this converts into my uh, regex pattern for this one okay? so uh, uh, it's basically looking for now it is looking for this pattern instead of fun or stuff it is looking for this pattern okay so uh, there is almost similar thing will be there in the pyspark as well uh, that that we can uh, that i can uh, what i'll do is just uh, in the in the same git i'll add uh, basically i'll add another uh, project there which will have the same things in pyspark and this this contains the scalar part Okay, and why I'm not going with the PySpark even if it is a preferred one because I'm uh, I'm not work much with the PySpark on the ID. I worked on it in a database environment, and I, I don't think there's a good good way to learn anything. Okay, uh, so what it do? It will look for this one in inside this, and then uh, we can see this one. Okay, so if you can see there, so I have. Use this one, so I have not written the uh, system dot exit, so everything is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you can do this one. You can do this one. What you can do is, uh, you can basically use the escape character here. And also it will work. Okay. Yeah. But why I'm telling you this one is uh, because. Uh, most of the time, what happens is uh, these all subs come from some file, and uh, we do not have access to the content uh, while running the program. We cannot manipulate it on the go. So, I, I'll go. I'm going to show you how to. So it's just a, sing, a simple uh, string manipulation thing, right? I'll have from the uh, text file. I've re uh, read that, and I've created a list. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, use a map. Uh, to uh, do a regex code to everyone for each and everything, even if it requires or not. Okay, and then uh, create a single R leg and then use that pattern. Uh, I'll I'll just give an example right now. Okay, what I want to say. Okay, so it is pattern code, and then you have this one. Okay, so now we have seen all this example, right? We have if it contains, all right, uh, it contains uh starts with, okay. Ends with, okay, and we have the regex one. Okay, so what I can do is, uh, simple, in simply, I I can have three different lists. I have a list for starts with, okay, starts with list, okay. and it contains the keywords, uh, list of characters, which uh, or the strings, which I need to do a uh, starts with, okay. And I have another one. It ends with. What I'll do is basically, I'm not given the parameters here, but let's assume you have something there. Okay. So what I'll do is basically I'll uh, use starts with dot map. So first thing is so. Uh, for starts with I need uh, carrot right okay. carrot and then I want uh, what I'll do is I'll use pattern dot quote whatever my starts with characters are it is X okay. and then what I'll do is at the end okay. C 
Similarly, what I'll do is this is my one string. Similarly, I'll create for the end switch. End switch dot map. I'll have x. I have the pattern dot port. Let's and then I have at the end I need to give the dollar. Similarly, I'll have the contains list. So what I what I have is it. Uh, three different uh, things I need to do. I need to check for the start, start with, end with, and it contains. Okay. What I'll do is then I'll concatenate all these things using a string, and I'll create a single string. So this becomes a single string literal. It's not an elegant way to do it, but same thing. So basically, it, what it'll do, it will uh, just check for all these keywords match, right? In single R like, just like my well, R like literal. So this contains all all my literals. Then what I'll do, I'll just use this one as uh, if dot with column all name. All on you, and then I'll use dot R like as the R like. So instead of uh, doing that multiple times, okay, first this one, then this one, then the third one, then fourth one, then instead of doing that, you, what we have done is basically use a single R like filter and uh, do all that. Stuff. So uh, this thing uh, help in cleaning the data. So uh, if you have certain things you want to check if, if some weird stuff is there in your data or not, you just found this one and you get okay. So uh, it will return. Do not use the same column. It will get assigned the same one. Just use a different one. So if it contains some weird stuff, or you can say that. Your text, and what will happen is uh, it will take for uh, that weird sub you have two or walls, and then what you can do is you can filter out those columns and check what is the issue, and then you can use regex to fix those things. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for all time. Bye. 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 Bye.